Hello, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering Sergey Lang's basic mathematics, and this is section 17.2, determinants of order two. Okay, so what is a determinant? Well, if we have a matrix and the matrix is defined to be A, B, C, D, then the determinant of the matrix is the determinant is A times D minus B times C. Okay, A, D minus B, C. Okay, as an example, he says, suppose we had the matrix 3, 6, 1, 7. So the determinant would be A times D, so that's 3 times 7, minus 6 times 1. So that's 21 minus 6, which is just 15. Okay, another determinant, let's use a different color, this nice blue here. So if we had the matrix uh, 2, minus 2, minus 5, 4, and 8, then we're going to take minus 2 times 8 minus minus 5 times 4. Okay, so this is minus 16. Minus a minus is positive, so that's plus 20. And so the determinant there is 4. Okay, we can also use lines to represent the, the determinant. So we write the determinant like this A, B, C, D is equal to A, D minus B, C. Okay, so you, you see we replace the parentheses with straight lines. So if you see straight lines around a matrix, that means you're taking the determinant, right? And if we had a matrix that we wanted to take the determinant of, we could just put the bars around the matrix name. Okay, so as an example, um, if we had minus 2, minus 5, 4, and 8 with a straight line, that's the same determinant. That would give us 4. Okay. He introduces another symbol. He says we can also use D, where we put the matrix A on the inside. That's one way to do it. I have seen it written as DET, where you put the A in like that. Uh, but I think the straight bars are pretty common too. That's very typical notation that we use. Okay. Theorem one. Let's talk about theorem one. Most linear algebra texts start with, you have a system of linear equations and you want to solve it, let's use matrices to do so, right? He doesn't do that. He says, here's the determinant. Oh, by the way, it's actually useful for something. So we have a system of equations, ax plus by is equal to u, and then cx plus dy is equal to v, okay? And he says, assume the determinant ad minus bc is not equal to zero, okay? then this system of equations has a unique solution. Meaning only one value of x and one value of y will solve this entire equation, okay? So we are going to prove this. If you go back to chapter three, we learned how to eliminate variables, okay? So what he does in this case for the proof is he starts off by multiplying the top by d and the bottom by b, so we get a d x plus b d y is equal to u d and then he multiplies the bottom by b so he gets c b x plus b d y is equal to v b okay and then he subtracts the second equation from the first equation so we get a d minus c b x and these two terms cancel is equal to u d minus v b okay um, we note that we can factor out the x and AD minus CB. What is that? Uh, so we can solve for x is equal to UD minus VB all over AD. I'm going to write BC like this, ADBC. Okay. If we did this for Y, so we would take, multiply the top and bottom by C. The top by C, so we have ACX plus BCY is equal to uc, and then we'll multiply the bottom by a, so we get acx plus a dy is equal to va, and we subtract the second equation from the first equation, so we're gonna get bc minus a dy is equal to uc minus va, and so we get y is equal to uc, uc minus va over bc minus a d, and if we multiply the top and bottom by negative one, we get VA minus UC all over 
AD minus BC, okay? So because AD minus BC is not equal to zero in both of these cases, we know that we have a unique solution for both of these equations, okay? He, what he does at this point is he plugs this back into these equations and he shows that it all equals itself, which is nice. But the important thing to note is that the solution for x is the determinant of uv and bd, like this, divided by the determinant of a, b, c, a, b, c, d. And the answer for y is the determinant of a, c, u, v, all over a, c, b, d, okay? So this u, v vector, this column vector, has replaced one of the columns in the top, and you take in the determinant of the, of the matrix, and then in the bottom, it's always the same, okay? This will be uh, important, because when we go to solve for three uh, matrices, three by three matrices, we're gonna get a similar solution, okay? Let's do an example, okay? So we have a system of equations, we have three x, minus 2y is equal to 5. We have 4x plus 7y is equal to minus 4. Okay, so we're going to just write this out from memory. So x is going to be a uv column, matrix, column vector times bd. So that's 2 minus 2 and 7. Okay, all over 3, 4, minus 2, 7. The determinant there. And y is going to be 3, 4. I'm sorry, uv. This is 5 and minus 4. Okay, so it's the 3, 4, A, B, and then U, V, 5, minus 4, all over 3, 4, minus 2, 7, right? So 3, 4, minus 2, 7, the determinant of that, 3, 4, minus 2, and 7, is equal to 21 minus, minus 8, so 21 plus 8, so that's 29. The matrix 5, minus 4, minus 2, 7, taking the determinant of that, we're going to get 35, uh, minus 8, because it's minus times a minus, it's positive, but we're taking minus of this, so it's minus. 35 minus 8 is, in fact, 27, I believe. And then we have the 3, 4, 5, and minus 4, so that's going to be minus 12, minus 20, so that's minus 32. So the answer is x is equal to 27 over 29, and y is equal to minus 32 over 29, okay? And that should work out for you. Um, theorem number two. Theorem two states that the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of the transpose of A. So taking the transpose doesn't change the determinant. So the proof is ra rather easy. Well, the determinant of A is just the determinant of this matrix A, B, C, D, right? Which is just A, D minus B, C. The determinant of the transpose of A would just be the determinant of this matrix. A and D are the same, but C and B are flipped. And so that's A, D minus C, B. Well, we can see by simple um, commutation that that's the same as AD minus BC. So indeed, they are the same. So we proved that those two matrices are the same, okay? Exercises for this one are rather simple. Uh, there's an interesting one, number two. It says compute the determinant of this matrix. So I'll write that out for you. Cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, and cosine theta. Now this matrix, if you haven't seen it before, is the rotation matrix, what you would apply to x and y, doing matrix multiplication, to rotate by theta degrees in the two-dimensional plane. So the question is, what determinant do you get here? And I'm not going to tell you the answer, but I will remind you that there are certain trigonometric identities in solving cosine squared of theta and adding sine squared of the same thing and getting that thing right there. If you don't remember what that identity is, it might help you to remember what Pythagorean theorem is and to remind yourself that you have a triangle like this. You have uh, A, B, C, and cosine is going to be A over C. Sine is going to be B over C, I believe. 
cosine is opposite. No, this is cosine is b over c, sine is a over c, and we have the relationship that a squared plus b squared must equal c squared. That's a right angle there, by the way. So you can go look up and review if you need to trigonometry to review the trigonometric identity there. Um, or you can derive that yourself, just given that information there, if you want to play with that for a while. Number three is interesting. Um, plug in different values of pi. Um, I'm going to give you very quickly, uh, if you need to jog your memory for how cosine and sine work. So theta, cos theta, sine theta. So if we have theta is equal to 0, cosine theta is 1 and sine is 0. If we have theta is equal to pi over 6, then cosine is root of 3 over 2, and this is 1 half. If we have pi over 4, then they're both root over 2 over 2. If it's pi over 3, then these two are switched, 1 half and root of 3 over 2. And I forget what the other angle that they have. Oh, pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. That's going to give you 0 and 1. Okay, so that table should help you solve that rather quickly so you don't have to spend too much time doing it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Take care and bye-bye. This video was part of my series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like, and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.